the I welcome all the people gathered for the CME and the general body meeting uh, of the IMA Mangalore, uh, the Mangalore brand. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be as we are already running late, we will, without further ado, we will be starting the program in a couple of minutes. I would request all the members who are outside the auditorium to kindly come in and take their places inside the hall. First, the President, the Secretary, the Treasurer, IMA Mangaluru, the Vice President, IMA KSB Brand, Dr. K. R. Kamath, uh, the Chief Guest, um, Dr. Suresh Kodova, President of the IMA Karnataka State Branch, Dr. B. Narayan Nayak, President IMA Kasurgod Branch, Dr. Bhaskar Chetty, Director, City Hospital, and Dr. Suresh Rao, uh, Director, MIO Hospital, to kindly come on to the dais, please. Of 2022-23, Dr. Venu Gopal, to kindly come on to the dais, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we are to, for, to, for all good things in life, we'll begin with the auspicious lighting of the lamp. I call upon all the dignitaries to kindly come forward and light the lamp. Director City Hospital and Dr. Suresh Rao, Director MIO Hospital, Mangalore, to kindly come and take the places on the dais, please. KR Kini oration today and um, also a CIME on oncology and oncological practice by the MIO organized by the MIOT, MIO Hospital and also the annual general body meeting. This is the agenda for the day. So, to, since we have a big agenda, we will start the program without further ado. I call upon the Secretary, I make KMC Mangalore, Dr. Sadhanand Pujari, to kindly come forward and call the meeting to order by placing the medallion on Dr. Asatya Munti Aital, President, IMA Mangalore. Call upon our treasurer, Dr. G.K. Bhattankapitlu, to kindly come forward and lead us in IMA prayer. Everybody be happy. May every one of us see to it that nobody suffer from any pain or sorrow. I do not ask for crown, nor I wish to be in heaven or reborn. I only want to elevate the suffering of those people who are burning in fire of sorrow. Please be seated. The welcome address by our beloved President, Dr. Satyamurti Aital. I call upon Dr. Satyamurti, Dr. Satyamurti Aital to kindly come forward and deliver the welcome address. Shatrupuddhi Vinayashaya Dipan Jyoti Namostate. Prostrating before the holy feet of the Almighty, the God, dignitaries on the dais, respected uh, chief guest of the day, Dr. Suresh Kurva, our uh, president, Karnataka State Branch, guest of honor, Dr. Professor, then uh, Dr. B. Narayan Naik supposed to join us uh, with, a short time, with a short time. Then uh, Dr. Suresh Rao, the director of Mangalore uh, Institute of Oncology. Then uh, Dr. Uh, incoming president, president elect, Dr. Ryan Gopal. Our secretary, Dr. Sadananda Pujari. State vice president, uh, Dr. K. R. Kamath and uh, our treasurer, Dr. G. K. Bhatt, the dignitaries of the dais. So, a good evening to every one of you. Today, we are having our prestigious uh, Dr. K. R. Kini Memorial Oration and also followed by general body meeting of our IMA Mangalore branch. List of the new incoming office virus would be announced. So, at this juncture, you all know Dr. K. R. Kinney, uh, who is the uh, first person to practice uh, here after MBBS in 1920. I think uh, Dr. K. R. Kamath is going to uh, give an uh, introduction about uh, Dr. K. R. Kinney. 
So he is the first person who is a, who has started some uh, South Kendra Professional Association of Doctors in uh, somewhere around 1930 before the uh, inception of our IMA Mangalore, I mean IMA uh, South Kendra branch. So he was the one uh, who felt that uh, always the doctors, if they assemble together and exchange their views, it is better for the patient and also for their profession. So he is the first person on his name. Uh, we have, I mean, the IMA Mangalore has started this oration every year. So we are on that uh, juncture now. Here we have with us as uh, chief guest, Dr. Suresh Kudwa. He is our uh, president of KS3, that is uh, Karnataka State Chapter of uh, IMA. And uh, he is something uh, about our Suresh Kurva is uh, everyone said that he should be brief. So mm -hmm. I'll be touching only important points. Uh, he has uh, he had his primary education in Katir and then uh, MBBS from TMC Manipal, then DCH and MD from uh, uh, Mysore, uh, MMC Mysore. Then he started his uh, pediatric practice in 1984. He has served uh, IMA, Karkala branch as well, uh, the state branch uh, in various capacities and executed his uh, job properly. He has been awarded uh, many I mean, awards, he has received many awards from uh, Rotary Club, JC Lions Club and other things. An important one is, uh, I think, uh, he is the person who received BC Roy State Award in 19, 2019. So he is with us. And uh, I think his uh, second time he is visiting as uh, our chief guest, I think. First time he had come uh, installation day, yes. So, on behalf of every one of us here, I welcome you, sir, to this August gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, to welcome on behalf of IMA Mangalore, I get, uh, the ch chief guest of today's function, Dr. Suresh Kudwa, President IMA KSB. I call upon Dr. Jerem Pinto, sir, to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Suresh Kudwa. Uh, amongst the uh, guests of honor, we have with us uh, Professor Dr. Bhaskar Shetty, Kailakere, Molahalli Village, Amen. He belongs to. And uh, he had his uh, MBBS degree from uh, Kubli, then uh, MS from KMC Mangaluru, and he served initially as uh, Assistant Surgeon Government side. He, was, he has worked in uh, Water Primary Health Center, Dixie Hospital, Somar Pet, and Government Venlak Hospital. Later, he joined uh, KMC Mangaluru and uh, he ascended up in the cadre, became professor, and uh, he became HOD of surgery at Justice KS Day Medical Academy. And uh, of course, uh, he has trained many of us. He is a, a teacher of teachers. Many of uh, us here, I, I think, we are his students. So. And uh, he has got many papers, 10 scientific papers and uh, research papers. And uh, then, uh, he's one thing I want to like to tell is uh, he is the main person behind uh, having this uh, IMA building here. He is the one who fought with the government and uh, got a land for our construction of this building. So, uh, so he does not require any other additional, I think, uh, uh, introduction. So, on behalf of every one of us here, I welcome you, sir. On, on behalf of IMA Mangalore, I call upon Dr. Divakar Rao sir to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Bhaskar Shetty. Thank you, Dr. Divakar Rao sir. Now, one more of our uh, guest of honor is uh, Dr. Suresh Rao. So, he is my uh, ex colleague. We, uh, we worked together in uh, Father Mullahs for many years. So, he is a very simple person, always smiling. So, Dr. Suresh Rao is the Chief of uh, Radiation Oncology Department at uh, Bangalore Institute of uh, Oncology and he is an expert in external beam radiation therapy and brachy therapy. So, he has uh, done his uh, MBBS and MS, I mean the MD Radiation Oncology both from KMC, Mangal uh, KMC Manipal. Then he has uh, a vast experience of uh, working in various premier cancer studies. Uh, and uh, he, has a, he has a unique distinction of starting three radiation oncology centers in the world. One is Salmania Medical Complex Barin, 
Father Muller Medical College, Mangaluru, and uh, Mangaluru Institute of Oncology. And one more point about him is uh, he is one of the few radiation oncologists in India to have specialized in stereotactic ablative radiation therapy. The method that helps to eliminate tumors that cannot be removed surgically with minimal side effects. So, he is the first doctor to have adopted the stereotactic uh, ablative radiation therapy in Mangaluru. And he has, I think, I mean, uh, completed about treating, uh, I think, 25,000. Uh, uh, 40,000. 40, 40,000 of patients uh, uh, has given radiation therapy. So, on behalf of uh, Every one of you, sir, uh, here, I extend you a warm welcome, sir. And also, he is the uh, host of today's uh, meet. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of IIM Bangalore, I call upon Dr. Devdas Rai to kindly come forward uh, and welcome Anadatha. Dr. Narayan Naik is uh, the President of Kasagod IMA and uh, he is, I think, uh, Vice President of uh, Kerala State uh, IMA branch, state branch, and he is a pediatrician by profession and uh, he is uh, Vice President of KGMO Kerala. And uh, so that is about, and he has uh, trained both government and private health care workers, so many are their accomplishments, so I don't want to read all these things. Anyway, he may join us at any time, so uh, I also welcome him to this uh, CME program. And uh, on the other uh, people, I mean, person on the dais, uh, Dr. Ker Kamath, our state vice president, and uh, president-elect Dr. Vain Gopal, Dr. Sadhanand Pujari and uh, my friend, uh, I mean, Secretary Dr. Sadhanand Pujari, Treasurer Dr. G.K. Butt. So, as a formality, I welcome you all, sir, to this uh, CME. And then on the dais, uh, on the MC desk, we have Dr. Jatanna. So, and uh, dignitaries of the dais, all the senior and junior members of IMA Mangaluru, invited guests, family members. I invite or I welcome each and every one of you for this uh, CME and uh, please be seated and uh, 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 let's the uh, proceedings to happen. Jai Hind, Jai Karnataka. Thank you, Dr. Satyamurthy Aital, President IMA Mangaluru, for a short and sweet introduction of the guests. Ladies and gentlemen, we um, regret to inform that we had a loss of one of our senior members, Dr. T. A. Bailur, uh, and to uh, acknowledge our um, uh, grief and to pay respect to the departed soul, I would like uh, the um, uh, audience to kindly rise and observe a moment, minute of silence, please. All hours of the day during those times and also night, Dr. Kinney soon enough to found that Doctor's life could not be could be lonesome without company of his fellow uh, professionals. With the object of keeping it up with the high tradition of medical profession, as well as to create a brotherly feeling amongst the members of the profession, with a few like-minded colleagues, he broached the subject of starting a professional association, maybe before the IMA started in this country and few uh, places, even in Gadag, this has happened with one of the uh, private practitioners there. For the few years, the district medical officers were requested to be the president and Kinney took the unenviable role of secretary and treasurer for the association, not only for the first eight years and again after five years. And membership was only 20. Soon enough, doctors from surrounding places like Udupi, Kundapur, and Brahmavar, Puttur, Upinangadi, Karakala, Mudbidri, other places joined here. That's why it was South Kendra branch. And Kinney was informed in his uh, he was informed in all his uh, uh, subjects, and he kept himself up to date. Constant study of medical books and journals. He often contributed to the articles to involving his experience to the Journal of Antiseptic of Madras. 
He worked honorary assistant surgeon in Government Menlock Hospital, Mangalore, for a few years on the surgical side. Kinney attended several provincial and all India confer conferences of Indian Medical Association. And Dr. Kinney loved the branch of the association which he was a founder member. He worked hard for the welfare of the association till the last. He died suddenly after a brief illness on 29th September 1954, leaving his wife, four sons, three daughters, and the vast circle of uh, relatives, friends, and grateful patients. And Dr. C. R. Kamath, his, his, uh, uh, his maternal uncle was uh, K. R. Kini. And uh, last year, uh, Dr. Chit Kurva called a few of the relatives to uh, here, and they are some up there in Hubli, if I'm not wrong. And in the honor of his inestimable, uh, inestimable service to the branch, this branch, a portrait of K. R. Kini was unveiled, and also a memorial oration was held every year. That's why we are doing this today. For in the name of Dr. K. R. Kini, that is Dr. Kulal Raghavendra Kini. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now we come on to the uh, address by the Chief Guest, Dr. Suresh Kudwa, President, IMA KSB branch. Dr. Aita, Secretary, Dr. Sadhanan Pujari, mm -hmm. Chief Guest, Dr. Bhaskar Chetty, Dr. Suresh Rao, Next year's President-elect, Dr. Venugopal, Vice-President, Karnataka State Branch, my office bearer, Dr. K. R. Kamath, and your treasurer and my PRO, Dr. G. K. Bhatt, and esteemed members of IMA Bangalore. It gives me a great pleasure to associate with you that too on the occasion of Dr. K. R. Kinney Memorial Oration. As you are told, Dr. K. R. Kinney was a founder secretary of this branch and he has been secretary for eight years initially and again maybe a few more times. And I am told he is a model family physician. And on this auspicious day, we are, Dr. Shekhar Pujari is going to enlighten us regarding family physicians, what is the role of family physician. Dr. K. R. Kini himself was a model here family physician. I think we have to follow him. That is the need of the hour. Friends, all of us knew that family physician has a great role in the management of our patients in this society. The old glory of medical profession was mainly because of this family physicians. At those days, doctors were treated as gods. They were very much respected. However, now the day has come, doctors are highly suspected. And we have to drive out this social thinking. And we have to bring out, bring back the glory of family physicians again. No doubt, now this is the era of specialization. We, we don't have dearth of any doctors. To be frank, in Karnataka state, number of doctors are much more than what WHO expects. We have maybe one is to find the doctors as of now. Every year we are producing around 9,000 doctors in Karnataka itself. And as of now, registration in KMC is 1,65,000 odd. Even some of them have died or gone abroad. Most probably, our ratio of patient to doctor is above one is to five hundred. Still, government feels that doctor-patient ratio is less. We need to move. So, many more medical colleges are coming up day by day, and seats are being increased day by day. And recently, in Rajiv Gandhi University uh, for <coughs> confirming its seats in PGCS, 
in one medical college, they have applied for 40 MD medicine, 40 MS general surgery, 25 MD pediatrics, and in the same, maybe almost 400 PG seats. And with this number of doctors being produced, forget about MBBS, postgraduates, where we are heading to. But still, society is not happy with our medical facilities available. You know that olden days, many of our rich people and politicians used to go abroad for the bypass surgery or organ transplants. Now, all that is reverse is happening. People from abroad are coming to India for such treatments. This is all because of the improvements of medical education in India. So, because of the MCI, in which started in 1956 by Dr. B.C. Roy, medical education has tremendously improved. And so much so that recent COVID disaster. The, it is well managed in, in our country than in any country of the world. The mortality was to the least in India. Even with vaccination, the Indian vaccination, vaccines were later proved to be the best and we have been the world leaders in the vaccination. So all these developments in India, still people are not happy. People feel that medical treatment is costly. So we have to introspect ourselves. At least at IMA level, we should discuss ourselves how to streamline this, our system. Definitely, things are not really right. But the association like this, association like IMA, and all other associations, we have to introspect ourselves. Friends, this year, and what I feel is, in our profession, what is mainly, we are lacking unity. All our modern doctors are divided in different associations. IMA, no doubt, is a mother association. But all other associations like IAP, API, ASI, FOXI, so many of the, these members of this association are not members of IMA. So we are not united. So this year, to improve the unity, we have started an idea called SOMA, Federation of Medical Associations. That means all the specialty associations along with IMA will work as federation and at district level and we plan for the common CMEs, common get-togethers and common source of medical activities so that the unity among our association will improve. Definitely IMA Mangalore has taken a lead in this because what I am told is in IMA Mangalore almost all specialists are members and Majority of the CMEs are sponsored by this specialty organization and you have consultants association. So I expect this idea should come from, has come from Mangalore itself. Finally, IMA Mangalore has done a wonderful work this year. There are very good CME programs, very good medical social activities. I expect that they will bag many more awards in this IMA State Conference. With this few words, I conclude. Thank you. I call upon Dr. Harish Rao to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Naran Nag, please. Dr. Harish Rao, kindly come forward. Thank you, Dr. Harish Rao. I call upon Dr. Naran Nag. President, I am a Kasur Goat Branch to kindly come forward and address the gathering. Good evening to all. Respected uh, President, I am a Mango Branch, Dr. Aital, sir. 
secretary and uh, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. First of all, I thank uh, IMA Mangalore branch for in inviting me as guest of honor for today's function. It is a great honor to IMA Kasaragod. For the last one year, we IMA Kasaragod branch, we uh, were celebrating our Golden Jubilee year and we were conducted many socially committed activities including uh, activities uh, for the benefit of our uh, members. IMA Kerala State Branch is having so many uh, social uh, uh, schemes uh, to the benefit of our members including uh, social security scheme 1, 2 and 3. Also, uh, we have professional protection scheme, health scheme and all. So, many of the doctors practicing in here in uh, Mangalore uh, are from our place only, Kasaragod only. So, a relation between uh, IMA Kasaragod and uh, uh, Mangalore branch, it is the need of the hour. So, so many issues are there. Uh, 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 during this uh, era, there is uh, issues related to our uh, medical profession and uh, so many other things. So, we have uh, a greater role to play to uh, uh, to tackle such issues. Uh, we need full support from uh, Mangalore IMA because uh, Actually, in Kasargod, uh, we have no tertiary care uh, facility, no medical colleges. So, our patients depend on uh, Mangalore Hospital. Mainly, uh, you IMA doctors, we depend on you. And uh, there will be some issues uh, when we refer some patient to uh, here Mangalore. Uh, some issues uh, will develop, uh, some communication gap will happen sometimes. So, uh, our humble request is, as far as possible, try to dilute the situation and uh, uh, take the confidence of the uh, patients as well as the doctors community so that uh, we have a harmonious relationship between uh, IMA Kasargod as well as IMA Mangalore and uh, uh, we uh, want to have a good relationship in future also uh, between IMA Mangalore and IMA uh, Kasargod and uh, so in future, I think we can conduct some uh, meetings uh, together so that uh, IMA Kasargod uh, doctors benefit from the knowledge uh, what uh, Mangalore doctors have and uh, also reverse from uh, from the practical point of view where uh, when the general practitioner said from the many of doctors we in Kasargod because uh, they are doing lot of great work because of the uh, in the limited uh, facility available there. So, we can have a mutual interaction between the uh, two uh, uh, doctor community and uh, we have uh, solutions for that uh, issues whenever uh, there is some issues. So, first of all, I thank uh, the office bearers uh, for uh, especially Dr. Sadan Gaud and Aital sir uh, uh, for inviting me for this. Uh, along with me, my secret our secretary Dr. Kasim is there. Uh, Dr. Janard Naik is the Central Council member. Dr. Jyoti is the gynecologist and also Kasagod, my better half. Uh, so we, uh, as a team, we came to here to attend this uh, meeting to see how the uh, things are going on here in uh, Mangalore. So we have uh, our Golden Jubilee souvenir here. I request Dr. Kasim to please come and uh, we'll hand over that uh, souvenir to your branch as a token of <laughs> appreciation for calling us here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another guest of honor, uh, who is a teacher of teachers, as Dr. Aital sir correctly said. So I call upon Dr. Kailakire Bhaskar Shetty to kindly come forward and address the gathering, please. Dr. Satyamurti Rao, Chief Guest of the Evening, Dr. Suresh Kudua, Guest of Honor, Dr. Suresh Rao, Dr. Narayan Naik, Secretary, Sadanand Pujari, 
Dr. K. R. Kamath, incoming president, Dr. Venugopal, Dr. Sankabitlu, and Mercurial Master of Sarvani Galaxy of my colleagues. At the outset, I thank the office bearers and the members of the IMA Mangalore for inviting me to be guest of honor on this great occasion. IMA is great. We are the people who should be the support or the, the most important part of the IMA to survive and progress. Unless we are united and have affection and helpful nature to each of us, others, we cannot tackle the problems that any one of us may face during our professional life. Be honest to your patients, be committed to your work, do a hard work and be a more morally, you should be upright and very considerate when we charge the patients. The problem starts only when the bill is handed over to the party and particularly whether it is because of the disease itself, the result is not good. Not necessarily that you are done bad. Under that circumstances, the patient and patient's party are against you. But face it by means of always putting everything in writing on your case sheets, every documentation, a proper documentation, a clear cut handwriting and the entries always will save you and it is most important in all aspects of your future also. Be helpful to your juniors, do not belittle your colleagues whenever something happens to his patient or when they come for second opinion and always protect your professional colleague. Be united, be helpful. This building itself is an example of unity and the purpose of common feeling. And unless we are united, we will never succeed. I don't want to take much time. I wish all the youngsters to do well and your hard work will definitely give you very good returns in your life. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Dr. Bhaskar Shetty, Director of City Hospital, for your words of advice. Ladies and gentlemen, IMA Mangalore would mm, like to recognize the services rendered by Dr. Suresh Rao, Director MIO Mo Hospital Mangalore. And for on behalf of IMA Mangalore, we would like to felicitate him on this occasion. I call upon Dr. Suresh Rao, sir, to kindly come forward and take his seat on the ceremonial chair. All the dignitaries on the dais to kindly come forward and do the honors of felicitating Dr. Suresh Rao, Director, MIO Hospital, Mang Mangalore. As uh, Dr. Sadhanan Pujari, the Secretary of Mangalore has been prompting, Dr. Suresh Rao has completed more than 40,000 patients in his
guest of the day, Dr. Suresh Kudwa, guest of honor, Dr. Narayan Naik and Dr. Bhaskar Shetty, my senior colleagues, Dr. Aital and uh, Sadan Pujari, who took special interest in asking MIO to have a CME here, so incoming uh, office bearers, and uh, my senior colleagues here, Dr. Devakar Rao, Devakar Rai and others, family members of IMA also, who have probably come today. Uh, it gives me great pleasure that uh, IMA is felicitating me. Compared to many of them, I am a little bit young, but I am still touching 60 now. I will be a senior citizen in another two years. So hopefully, <laughs> I will get some government benefit, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, regarding my achievements in this uh, number of patients, uh, it's nothing on intention that you do these things. It is on uh, you are put in a situation and then you want to treat or know that is left to you. The burden, whether to take it or no. So generally in any hospital, we treat around 600 to 900 patients on a radiotherapy machine per year. So earlier in Manipal, there were only one or two postgraduates, so your number would be high. You are forced to treat that many patients. And then when I went abroad also, there's only one or two people there. So I treated around 10,000 patients in Manipal, and 3,000, 4,000 outside. And when I came to Father Muller again, I was alone there. So obviously, we are treating 100 patients on the machine per day. And today we have 12 or 14 doctors there for that number, for 40 patients actually. So unfortunately, I was there for whatever reason. And in MI also, we were alone till I, we have appointed only recently new faculty for us to help us. So it was under that circumstances I reached that big number which is difficult generally. I am happy that MIO has grown over the period of years. We started with only seven staff members, today we are 220. And we are happy that we are supporting so many families. Our philosophy in MIO is that the patient quality, the care what we give should be top and we should not compromise on that. That is the first principle in MIO. Second is the doctor should never be told to do free treatment. There is no free service in MI from doctor. Hospital can do free, but the doctor should be made happy. The hospital staff should be happy. And third is the hospital. So we work on that principle and this has helped us to achieve a lot of uh, confidence from the patients. 70 or 60 percent of our patients are government schemes, which is cashless. And at the same time, we have 30 percent who are really affordable and who are taking treatment in MIO. Like the immunotherapy that is given in MIO, I think is one of the biggest number in all, all India. So that many rich patients, affordable patients are coming to MIO. At the same time, most of the poor patients also come to MIO. So this is because we are specialized in oncology. I worked in general hospital. I felt the need for an oncology center because we can put all our focus as administration to oncological care. There is no reader, other reason to start a separate hospital. And generally, in MIO, we don't want to duplicate any equipment that is there in Mangalore. So if there is some equipment, we would not like to put it again in hospital because it will be wastage of resources for all of us. So we have worked on these principles. And uh, I had a wonderful team. I should thank uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad oh, and uh, Dr. Sanatekde, Jalal Dunakbar, and so many other investors initially. Uh, because uh, oncology is a capital intensive project. It requires minimum 25 crores those days. So it was very difficult for us, but people who have had trust in us and put small amounts, including so many members, doctor faculties in Mangalore, and other non-medical people also, I would like to thank them so that in our growth, they have helped us. So many doctors in Mangalore have supported MIO, have uh, referred patients out of confidence. It's nothing else. Uh, involved in that, out of pure uh, goodwill to us, and it's a doctor's project. It was very difficult to uh, execute because the loans and all banks are all very tough. It's not like hospital; we can ask concession in a bank. <laughs> in within six months, they will take over your house. Within seven months, you do it's the NPA. I never realized this till we started a hospital. I thought it's easy. I just I thought the bank manager is such friendly to me. So I said, Madam, uh, this month we cannot pay, I'll pay next month. Then she told me the whole procedure. Three months you don't pay, it will come in the one warning. Fifth month it will go to the newspaper, seventh month you are out. So I was shocked that uh, this is the way things work outside the medical field. We are used to giving concession and 
uh, that is a norm in hospitals generally but it's not also in the outside world in the non medical area they are very ruthless and uh, they will not show any compassion towards us so we started paying loans uh, in advance whatever money we had out of fear we were paying and instead of completing in 7 years we completed the loan in 6 years we don't want to we didn't want to burden the patient by you know increasing the charge so but anyway we are able to manage now fortunately we are loan free so we can sleep peacefully so it's a big project and now we have a lot of colleagues with us and uh, since we started as a senior people now other members are, uh, we have to give chance to others so that's how we have to progress because otherwise it's very difficult for doctors uh, to work in stressful conditions it will affect our health and generally that will take a toll on everything that we have done so we have built a team now we are in the third layer of the team we can see <laughs> me krishna pa me sanat agde may be around 35 years experience now krishna prasad is there with 20 years probably and then hemant kinia is there with 5 8 years so we already have the three layers which are going to take over the mio and uh, probably grow it further and see that it is successful so i would like to thank mi uh, mio staff who are assembled here uh, who are now will help us in the post uh, session dinner etc they have been a wonderful team who have helped very well to build mio uh, and i should really thank them because they are the part of this growth so we get the credit we are the face of it but i think uh, lots of people have helped us uh, this path and one more thing i should tell is when the uh, uh, durgadas our po told that uh, this ima meeting we have to host and he uh, told me that can you host it in uh, ocean pearl or some uh, hotel big hotel i said no if ima hall is giving us permission we have to hold it there itself so i think it's a good and the second thing what he told me was sir alcohol cannot be served i said that's wonderful i think that's uh, one of the best decisions it's in ima mangalore i think all over karnataka sir ima has to follow this i think it's not difficult for a mio to spend 30 40000 i think anybody can spend but i think the principle behind this that not uh, serving al alcohol especially with family i think it's a wonderful decision otherwise we all would go ahead to the <laughs> drink counter you and i take a drink and we would leave our family behind somewhere else so i think uh, this is a wonderful decision and i hope that i am in all over the state should follow such kind of good things that i am in mangalore is doing i thank again all one of you all of you thank you one and all thank you thank you dr suresh rao director mio hospital for your words of advice Ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware, today is the late Dr. K. R. Kini oration, and to deliver the oration, we have with us uh, eminent family physician, Dr. Se Shekhar Pujari. I request Dr. Shekhar Pujari to kindly come on to the dais. I would like to introduce Dr. Shekhar Pujari. Dr. Shekhar Pujari was Dr. Shekhar Pujari was born to an agricultural family in Chinjar village to the late Omaya Pujari and ba late Bhavani on the 1st of June 1968. He is from KMC Mangalore in 1993 and is a post-graduation in ophthalmology from JGMC Davangere in 1998. He was trained in Miraj Hospital in Sangli for a year and has now been practicing since 2000 at Bajpe in Bhavani clinic named after his mother. The, he is married to Ms. Vichalakshi. He has, he has been blessed with four children, three daughters, the Shavya, Pavitra and Pallavi, and her son, Pavan Raj Shekhar. Ladies and gentlemen, to deliver the oration today on the role of family physician in medical practice in uh, today's world, I, is, I give to you Dr. Shekhar Pujari. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of IMA Mangalore, we would like to felicitate Dr. Shekhar Pujari, I call upon the President, Secretary and all the dignitaries on the dais, including the IMA President of Karnataka State Brand, to kindly come forward and do the honours, please.
ಕನ್ನಡಕ್ಕೆ ಗೌರವವನ್ನು ಕೊಡುತ್ತಾ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಅನಿಸಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನು ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ ಬಯಸ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದೆ ವೇದಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಈಗ ತಾನೇ ಇದ್ದಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತರು ಕೆಳಗೆ ಆಸೀನರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನವರು ನನ್ನ ಗುರುಗಳು ಪ್ರಥಮವಾಗಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಗುರುಗಳಿಗೆ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತಾ ನನ್ನ ಹಲವಾರು ಸಹಪಾಠಿಗಳಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತಾ ಹಾಗೂ ನನ್ನ ಕುಟುಂಬ ಸಮೇತ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಅವರಿಗೂ ವಿಶೇಷವಾಗಿ ನನ್ನ ಮಡದಿಯಾದಂಥ ವಿಶಾಲಾಕ್ಷಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಮಕ್ಕಳೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ವಂದಿಸುತ್ತಾ ನನ್ನ ತಂದೆ ತಾಯಿಗಳನ್ನು ನೆನೆಯುತ್ತಾ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಈ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಎ ನನ್ನನ್ನು ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ತಂದು ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಿದ್ದಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಪ್ರಥಮವಾಗಿ ಆಭಾರಿಯಾಗಿ ವಂದಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಂದು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕಿನಿ ಅವರು ಭ್ರತ್ತಿಯನ್ನು ಹಾರ್ಸ್ ಡ್ರಾನ್ ಜಡ್ಕಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಆರಂಭಿಸಿದರೆ ಇಂದು ನಾವು ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ಪದ್ಧತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ರೋಗಿಗಳನ್ನು ಆಲ್ಕೊಹಾಲಿಕ್ ಡ್ರವಿನ್ ಡ್ರಿವನ್ ವಡ್ಕಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗುಡ್ಕಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸಬೇಕಾದಂಥ ಅನಿವಾರ್ಯ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ನಾವು ಇಂದು ಅನುಭವಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಅಂದು ಸತ್ಯದ ಕಾಲ ವೈದ್ಯರನ್ನು ದೇವರು ಎಂದು ಸಂಬೋಧಿಸಿದ್ದರು ನಂಬುತ್ತಿದ್ದರೂ ಕೂಡ ವೈದ್ಯರನ್ನು ಗುಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಳೆಯುತ್ತಿದ್ದರು ಆದರೆ ಇಂದು ಕಾಲ ಬದಲಾಗಿದೆ ಪೇಷನ್ಸ್ಗಳಿಗೆ ಅಂದು ಪೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಇತ್ತು ಐ ಮೀನ್ ತಾಳ್ಮೆ ಇತ್ತು ಆದರೆ ಇಂದು ಅದು ಮಾಯವಾಗಿದೆ ಇಂದು ವೈದ್ಯರನ್ನು ಹಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲೆಯುತ್ತಾರೆ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ತೆಗೆಯುವವರು ಎಡ್ಡೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಯಾರು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಫೀಸ್ ತಗೊಳ್ತಾರೋ ಅವರು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಲ್ಲ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನನ್ನ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಎಂ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರಥಮವಾಗಿ ಪಾಸ್ ಆದ ನಂತರ ಒಂದು ಘಟನೆ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಒಂದು ಎಂಟು ವರ್ಷದ ಮಗು ರಾತ್ರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಓದುವಂತಹ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಗೋಡೆಯಲ್ಲಿಟ್ಟಂತಹ ಆ ಚಿಮಿನಿ ದೀಪ ಆ ಮಗುವಿನ ದೇಹದ ಮೇಲೆ ಬಿದ್ದು ಇಡೀ ದೇಹ ಸುಟ್ಟು ಹೋಯಿತು ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಬರ್ನ್ಸ್ ಒಂದು ಮಂಗಳೂರಿನ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿತ ಆಸ್ಪತ್ರೆಗೆ ದಾಖಲಾಯಿತು ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆಸ್ಪತ್ರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬ ಜನ ಬಂದರು ಸಹಕಾರವನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿದರು ನಂತರ ಆಸ್ಪತ್ರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳಿದರು ನಿಮಗೆ ಈ ಮಗುವನ್ನು ಇನ್ನು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಂಡಿಚರ್ ನಿಮಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಅಸಾಧ್ಯ ಮಗುವಿನ ಬದುಕು ಕೂಡ ಅನುಮಾನಾಸ್ಪದ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಮನೆಗೆ ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿ ಇವರು ಮನೆಗೆ ತಂದರು ನನ್ನ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ ನೇಬರ್ ನನಗೆ ಕರೆ ಮಾಡಿದರು ನಾನು ಆಗ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ಐ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ಮೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಥ್ಯೂಸಿಯಾಸಮ್ ಟು ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ನಾನು ಆ ಮಗುವನ್ನು ಡ್ರೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಲು ದಿವಸಾಗಲು ಆರಂಭಿಸಿದಾಗ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ನನಗೆ ಸುತ್ತಮುತ್ತ ಅಲ್ಲಿರುವಂಥ ಜನರೇ ನನಗೆ ಶ್ವಾಸ ತೆಗೆಯುವಂಥ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ಕೂಡ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದರು ಕಾಲಕ್ರಮೇಣ ಅದು ಮಾಯವಾಯಿತು ತದನಂತರ ಆ ಮಗುವನ್ನು ನೋಡಲು ಗತಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂಥ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಆ ಎರಡು ಕೈಯನ್ನು ಮಗುವಿನ ಎರಡು ಕೈಯನ್ನು ಬೆಂಚಿ ಕಟ್ಟಿ ಕಾಲನ್ನು ಬೆಂಚಿ ಕಟ್ಟಿ ನಾನು ಎಂಟು ಗಂಟೆಯಿಂದ ಕನಿಷ್ಠ ಹನ್ನೆರಡು ಗಂಟೆಯ ತನಕ ಅವನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಡ್ರೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಆ ಮಗು ನನಗೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತಹ ತೊಂದರೆ ಮೂತ್ರವನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ನನ್ನ ಮುಖಕ್ಕೆ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಆದಾಗ್ಯೂ ಯಾರೂ ಇಲ್ಲದ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಆ ಮಗುವಿನ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾದಂಥ ಹೊಣೆಗಾರಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ತಗೊಂಡು ಆ ಮಗುವನ್ನು ಇಂದು ಬದುಕಿಸಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಎಂಬಂಥ ಒಂದು ನನ್ನ ಮನಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಸಂತೋಷದಾಯಕ ಅಂತ ವಿಚಾರ ಕಳೆದ ವರ್ಷ ಆತ ಮದುವೆಯಾಗಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಫಾರಿನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಈಗ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫಿಶ್ನೆಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್
ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಆದಾಗ್ಯೂ ನಾನು ಹಲವಾರು ಡೆತ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲರೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ರೈನ್ ಕೋಟ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಗ್ಲೌಸ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಫೇಸ್ ಮಾಸ್ಕ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಹೋಗ್ ಹೋಗ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ನನ್ನನ್ನು ಹಲವರು ನೋಡಿ ಹೇಳಿದರು ರೈನ್ ಕೋಟ್ ದಯಾ ಫಾರ್ದರನ್ನು ಈತ ಬರ್ಸೋದಲ್ಲ ಬರ್ಬೇಕು ಏನು ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಬಿ ಕಿಟ್ ವಿ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಈವನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದೇ ಗಿವನ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಚಾಯ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾನು ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಸಂತೃಪ್ತಿ ಕೂಡ ನನಗೆ ಇದೆ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯರು ಆ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಸಮಾಜ ಹಾಗೂ ಸರಕಾರದ ಬೆನ್ನೆಲುಗೆ ನಿಂತಿದೆ ಆ ಸಂದರ್ಭವನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯರು ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಎಂಬಂತ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ನನ್ನದು ನನಗೆ ಐದರಿಂದ ಎಂಟು ನಿಮಿಷ ಮಾತಾಡಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಅವಕಾಶ ನೀಡಲಾಗಿದೆ ಅದರಿಂದಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮವಾಗಿ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಶ್ಲೋಕವನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನೈನಂ ನೈನಂ ಚಿಂತಂತಿ ಸಸ್ತ್ರಿ ನೈನಂ ಚಿಂತಂತಿ ಸಸ್ತ್ರಿ ನೈನಂ ದೋಹತಿ ಪಾವಕ ನೈನಂ ದಹತಿ ಪಾವಕ ನೈನಂ ಕ್ಲೇದ ಯಂತ್ಯಾಪೋ ನೈನಂ ಕ್ಲೇದ ಯಂತ್ಯಾಪೋ ನ ಶೋಷಯತಿ ಮಾರುತ ನ ಶೋಷಯತಿ ಮಾರುತ ಅಂದರೆ ನೈನ ಅಂದರೆ ಆತ್ಮ ಆತ್ಮವನ್ನು ಶಸ್ತ್ರಗಳು ಕತ್ತರಿಸಲಾರವು ಆತ್ಮವನ್ನು ಬೆಂಕಿ ಸುಡಲಾರದು ಆತ್ಮವನ್ನು ನೀರು ನೆನೆಯಿಸಲಾರದು ಆತ್ಮವನ್ನು ಗಾಲಿ ಒಣಗಿಸಲಾಗದು ಅದೇ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯ ಪದ್ಧತಿಯನ್ನು ಯಾವುದೇ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲೂ ಯಾವತ್ತೂ ನಶಿಸಲು ಈ ಸಮಾಜ ಬಿಡುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ಎಂಬಂಥ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ನನ್ನದು ಯಾಕೆಂದರೆ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯನೇ ಭವಿಷ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಬೇಕಾಗುವಂಥ ಒಂದು ಪ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಅದು ನಶಿಸಬಾರದು ಆ ಆಗಬಾರ್ದಂತ ಆದರೆ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಸಹಕಾರ ವಿಶೇಷವಾಗಿ ಸೂಪರ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಾಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಸಹಕಾರ ಜನರಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಬೇಕು ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ನಿಮಗೆ ರೆಫರ್ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ನಿಮ್ಮಿಂದ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಟು ದ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಅ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಂದರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಇನ್ನಷ್ಟು ಈ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ಕುಟುಂಬ ಬದುಕುತ್ತದೆ ಎಂಬಂಥ ವಿಚಾರವನ್ನು ಹೇಳುತ್ತಾ ನಾನು ಈ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಜಿ ಕೆ ಭಟ್ ನೆನೆಸಲೇಬೇಕು ನಾನು ಮೊದಲಿಗೆ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಸರ್ ನನಗಿಂತ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಅವರು ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಗ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ದಾದಶೇಖರ್ ಪೂಜಾರ ಈತ ದುಮ್ಮು ಎಲ್ಪತ್ತರಿ ಈತ ನಲ್ಪೋಡ್ದೆ ಯಾರನ್ನ ಗ್ಯಾರಂಟಿ ಐತಿ ಆಯ್ತು ಅವರ ಇರ್ ಒಪ್ಪಿಲ್ಲ ಏನು ಸೊ ಸೊ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಫ್ ಎ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಈಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವಿತ್ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಜೈ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ಹಾಗೂ ಜೈ ಕುಟುಂಬ ವೈದ್ಯಕೀಯ ಕುಟುಂಬಗಳು ಕೂಡ ಆದಷ್ಟು ಇನ್ನಷ್ಟು ಬರಲಿ ಎಂದು ದೇವರಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆಯನ್ನು ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾ ನನ್ನನ್ನು ರೆಕಗ್ನೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥ ನಿಮಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಹೃದಯಂತರದಿಂದ ನಮಸ್ಕರಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಜೈ ಹಿಂದ್ ಜೈ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ರಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಸಿ ಎಮ್ ಇ ಆನ್ ಆಂಕಾಲಜಿ ಟುಡೇ ಆಂಕಾಲಜಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಂಕಾಲಜಿ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ whether it be the oncology practice of today radiation or the role of pet ct in oncology ladies and gentlemen to moderate today's section i call upon dr krishna prasad director academic medical oncologist of mio to dr krishna prasad is the consultant medical oncologist at mio he received his medical and postgraduate degrees from bangalore university and manipal university and did his dm in medical oncology from adr cancer hospital uh, dr krishna prasad is a, um, the first medical oncologist of mangalore and has vast uh, inter- expertise in the areas of cancer chemotherapy hormone therapy immunotherapy and neurobiological therapy on a personal note 
uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad and me used to walk to school together when we were in Milagri. And ladies and gentlemen, looking at me and him, you might look, I look a good decade older than him. So once somebody asked me, what is the secret of Krishna Prasad's youth? I said he drank at the fountain of youth at Shangri-La. So he has the man with the secret to the uh, secret of uh, Krishna Prasad. To the audience. Thanks, Sunil. Uh, I think uh, I can understand that already it's been a lot of uh, time and effort into this program. So, like Dr. Suresh Rao said, we would like to introduce you to the next generation uh, of uh, oncologists here. So, first I uh, will uh, introduce Dr. Hemant Kumar. Hemant is a medical oncologist who has joined us since February this year. Uh, he is very dedicated to his field and I think his thought process in uh, treating patients with compassion is extremely important. So, I think without uh, further ado, we can start the program. Hemant will be talking about uh, medical oncology practice, how it has changed from uh, uh, Dr. Venkat Ramanakini. Uh, he is going to talk about some basic aspects of radiation oncology. And then we have Dr. Yashasvi. He is a uh, nuclear medicine consultant. Dr. Krishna Prathas, if you would take the seat here. Before that, I call upon Dr. Chakrabani sir to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Krishna Prathas on behalf of IMM Mangalore. And Dr. Madhusudan to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Hemant Kumar. Kumar for oncologic practice then and now. Very good evening to all the dignitaries uh, present here. Uh, most of them being my teachers. I did my MBBS from KMC Mangalore and uh, I had the opportunity to learn under the best uh, of the teachers. So what I am going to do is going to discuss how probably we would have treated these cancers 10 to 20 years past probably when Dr. Krishnapas has started practicing here and uh, from him I have uh, he's been my teacher as well and I have known how uh, things were then and how things have changed now. So I will have three cases, quick cases discussion. So this is a 55 year old lady who had presented as uh, carcinoma right breast in the year 2018. She had a very early stage disease, hormone positive, started on hormone therapy. Three years later she presented with cough. And on evaluation, we had <coughs> on evaluation we found that she had multiple pulmonary metastases, almost around 16 in bilateral lungs. No bone or liver mets. Biopsy was still suggestive of metastatic carcinoma, and hormone receptor was still positive. So she had a year positive disease after three years. What would have been done 20 years back? Chemotherapy was a mainstay of treatment associate toxicity, alopecia, sustainability issues of continuing the treatment, families uh, not willing to take chemotherapy. Other option would be probably switch off hormone therapy to either tamoxifen and anastrozole which was available then or fulvestand which came out later. And what would have been the survival? We would have thought probably 6 months, 1 year, 1.5 years maybe. Now, for hormone positive metastatic breast cancer, the treatment of choice is a hormonal agent along with what is called a CDK46 inhibitor like palbocyclic, ribocyclic, or abemacyclic. With this, this is being an oral combination. They tend to have extremely good responses which are sustained. So this patient was initiated on abemacyclic plus valvancet in January 2022, clinically well since last nine months. And the PET's, uh, PET done and the CT comparison, you can see those liver meds have disappeared. PET CT is actually in complete remission now. Now why is this important? Because the hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer, the standard of care now is CDK4-6 inhibitor hormone therapy. Extremely good responses, sustained responses, minimal toxicity patient don't have any, any major toxicity, no alopecia, that is the most important thing for a lady with breast cancer and it's an oral therapy which the patient can take at home. More importantly, the survival has changed drastically. With the availability of these agents, probably what would have been uh, survival in metastatic breast cancer of 2 years maybe at max, 2, 2.5 years, 3 years maybe at max, it is crossing almost 5 years easily. So this has changed significantly in the terms of metastatic breast cancer. When I look at early breast cancer, this is a 58 year old lady who had presented with right uh, breast mass of 3 months duration, biopsy was positive. 
She was EAPR negative disease and HER2 positive disease. HER2 positive disease is considered as an aggressive biology disease. On clinical examination, it is a T2N1, probably would have thought this is an early stage disease. However, in a HER2 positive disease, we try to get a PET CT done when feasible. Why? Because the possibility of having the upstage in the disease is pretty common. So she had a 2.6 cm primary, 3.1 cm axillary node, large axillary node, and she had a 1.3 cm same side supraclavicular node. Remember in CA breast, the ipsilateral supraclavicular node doesn't make it a metastatic node, but it upstage the nodal disease to an N3C. So we can see the images of the same. So this is a tiny supraclavicular node which is positive, and the PET actually showing the ability there. Now, then there was no availability of PET CT or probably it was in the very early stages. The accuracy of staging would have been probably questioned. A T2N1 disease, I would have definitely proceeded with surgery then. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy started coming uh, then. However, trastuzumab was one of the earliest targeted therapy in breast cancer where the role was proven in adjuvant setting but it was pretty expensive. We decided to proceed with neogen chemotherapy, a combination of docetaxel carboplatin and two targeted agents, transfer and fertilizer, both work against the HER2. Six cycles, excellent clinical response, we could not feel the axillary node. We did a PET CT, absolutely no disease. The disease had disappeared on PET CT, but remember, even despite this, there is a possibility of uh, microscopic disease. We proceeded with radical mastectomy, there was complete pathological response. And in the current era, this is what we aim for. Whenever feasible, we would like to have a complete pathological response because especially in triple negative and HER2 positive breast cancers, there is a drastic difference in the survival in somebody who has achieved a pathological complete response. So how are we change the practice now? We try to proceed with PET CT when feasible because we have the accuracy of staging. Neoadjuvant therapy because triple negative and HER2 positive respond extremely well to chemotherapy and targeted therapy. Focus on organ preservation is more. Breast conservation surgery is now very easily feasible. In many cases, it is possible and the survival is no different from somebody who has undergone a radical mastectomy. So breast conservation surgery is offered as and when possible. And based on the response, in case somebody has responded very well, we can de-escalate the treatment and somebody who has not responded well, there is an opportunity to escalate the treatment to improve the outcome. The last case being that of a carcinoma lung, extremely common that we see. 72-year-old gentleman, non-smoker, diabetic, hypertension, but with CKD, creat of 2.4. He presented with one episode of seizure and unsteady notes of gait, evaluated, had a brain metastasis. So this was the initial PET scan. PET is not a very good modality to pick up brain met. This is a CT had picked it up, but the primary was pretty small. It was next to the main bronchus, but on bronchoscopy, there is no interluminal growth. What is the worry then? How to get a tissue diagnosis in this case? You have two so small brain lesions, nodal disease next to the bronchus. However, on bronchoscopy, it is clean. Establish a tissue diagnosis, probably mediastinoscopy or any other way. Whole brain RT would have been the direct straightforward treatment option in this case. Then probably the chemotherapy. Survival would have been extremely dispelled because somebody with brain metastasis, the two-year survival would have been 5 to 10 percent. So that was the situation then. What now? We got a EBUS guided uh, FNA, endoscopic bronchial ultrasound guided FNA. It was proven as metastatic carcinoma, however a biopsy sample was not taken and we did not have tissue for further diagnosis. In the current era, biopsy and IHC is almost always mandatory for confirmation of a diagnosis. What did we do? We were more interested because this patient was a non-smoker and somebody who is a non-smoker Mutation in lung cancer are pretty common. It can be range up to 25 to 40 percent. That is nearly one in two. So we took a blood sample, what is called a liquid biopsy, assess in case this mutation is there. And he was, he had a mutation positive, what is called a EGFR mutation positive. Now why is this interesting? We offered him radiation. We could have offered him SRT, but he chose to proceed with whole brain radiation. EGFR mutation was positive. Started on a drug called Jefitinib. Four, six months, PET CT done. And remember, this is drug. Oncology, the moment we tell oncology, we always think it's really expensive treatment. No, this is something that is available under Aishman scheme. Six months later, this was the previous scan, and there is absolutely no disease. These patients tend to respond very well to treatment, and this is how we treat lung cancer now. 
a moment a diagnosis of lung cancer is made, the next step is to try and assess what mutation this patient could possibly have. Because most of these are targeted therapies, treatment, uh, the response is extremely good in these cases. In case there are no mutation, we check what is called PDL1 score. This is a score to assess in case what is the possibility of response to immunotherapy because that is the next big thing in oncology. And this is how the treatment has changed. We probably had two, three initial chemotherapy options and now we do not talk of chemotherapy upfront in lung cancer. And why is, and the other way is to look at liquid biopsies whenever tissue sample is not there because currently the main uh, area of interest is therapy selection in these patients. Now why is this interesting? So this is EGFR positive lung cancer where your median survival, that is 50% of the patients are still surviving after around 38 months, that is more than 3 years. With immunotherapy we discuss a 5 year survival of 30%, that is 1 in 3 patients surviving. This specular subset, like this patient had brain metastasis, so there is a subset of lung cancer patients who tend to present with brain metastasis and in case they have a mutation called ALK, ALK the possibility of response to first line treatment at 36 months is more than 65 percent. So the whole treatment aspects in lung cancer is changing. To conclude, diagnosis, we have better mortalities of staging, PET CT is definitely a boon for us. We do not diagnose on FNA and then treat on FNA. We usually try to get a biopsy and IHC is always, almost always mandatory. Liquid biopsy is something that is feasible to try and assess for mutation testing and more so the target uh, treatment is changing to molecular marker based practice. Organ preservation wherever fe feasible, breast conservation surgery, rectum surgeries, minimal access surgery especially for prostate, radical prostate treatment, ovarian uh, malignancies, fertility preservation surgery something that is uh, uh, routinely practiced. Survival has improved, why? Because we are in the era of precision medicine trying to forget, uh, trying to target particular molecular pathways and treat that way. Multiple lines of therapy that is feasible. Try to identify a sequencing strategy on how to keep these patients, even with metastatic cancer, live long with a good quality of life. And more so, the treatment is multimodality. The team works as a radiation oncologist, surgical oncologist, medical oncologist, pathologist, uh, radiologists always we always work try to uh, work together to improve the survival and more so quality of life is increasing uh, chemotherapy definitely has its own toxicity we have drugs with much better toxicity profile oral or subcutaneous forms are available better understanding for the patients on the treatment aspect because on the net everything is available free uh, everything is available on easier access and better palliative care before I conclude this is one graph which probably inspired me uh, heavily in oncology. Now, CML is something which showed us that we can manage patients with cancer differently. CML had a prognosis of two to five years in the past. So in, in year 2000, they launched this drug called imatinib, which is a targeted therapy, the first targeted therapy approved in oncology as such. This is the largest study, of the oncology that one will ever see in their life. This is more than 60,000 patients treated with this drug imatinib for CML and at the end of 10 years you can still see that more than 80% of the patients are still surviving it is a very good quality of life. So this showed us the way how probably we have to change our path and always in oncology we tell that we have a long way to go but more so we need to remember that we have come a long long way from last 20 years. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Hemant. I think that was a very good oversight of how we are changing. Can I request Dr. Venkat Ramnakini to come and start his uh, uh, talk? In the meanwhile, I would just like to point out that just like how the family physicians requested the super specialist to, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep them in the loop and make sure the patients understand, which we do. We tell many patients when they are diagnosed in early stage that, you know, without your family physician, this would not have happened. The reverse is also true. Many of these patients, for example, the lung cancer patient with brain metastasis, when we tell that this is the way to go, you require radiation and we require to treat it in this way, many of them would refuse. The relatives would refuse. But if the family physician is informed about this and if he has an unclear understanding that there will be a few patients who will do well, the patients tend to come back to us for treatment once they have consulted their family physician. So I think the reverse is also very, very much true because we have seen patients even on a ventilator 
see a lung stage four, come out of it and survive. We have a young lady who is now I think six, seven years. Brain metastasis, sir, has radiated her. Patient was on ventilator when Dr. Akbar did a biopsy of the lung. So she had an ALK positive disease and she's still alive. She's in Dubai treat, uh, with her uh, kids. So I think we have come a long way, but clearly Hemant has put it across that we have not reached our goal. Uh, Dr. Kinney, uh, I think uh, Dr. Jatana said he likes his classmates. So Kinney is also his classmate during his uh, post-graduation. He's done MBBS in KMC Mangalore, MD in Father Mullers. Uh, he then he worked as senior resident in AJ Hospital. He's a wonderful addition to MIO, a very empathetic uh, uh, doctor with a clear understanding of radiation. Can you please on radiation oncology? On behalf of IMA Mangalore to welcome you and I call upon Dr. Kumar Swami sir to kindly come, Dr. Kumar Swami sir to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Kinney. Is all yours. Uh, good evening everyone. I will be speaking about radiation in oncology. I just want to say the radiation as a part of uh, oncology treatment, but what exactly we do here, many of them don't have an idea. It's like how Krishna Brother Sir was telling, like some of the patients are really scared to come for radiation. Even today I had a couple of them who are like, they just don't want this treatment. So the role of general practitioners, family physicians will have a big impact because the fear in the patients can be removed by uh, family doctors because they trust you more than us. So I'll just brief you about uh, what we do in uh, radiation therapy. So the overview of what I'm talking, firstly what is radiation therapy, then the types of radiation therapy, role of radiation therapy in various, various malignancies, the side effects and some of the myth busters. Firstly what is radiation therapy? The myth is, it is current treatment, shock treatment. This is what most of my patients think when they enter my chamber. Namge idon the current on the bada. Idi ake beko. Injections ilwa, surgery ago ilwa. But this is not what we do. The fact is, we treat using ionizing radiation. You can see the patient is sleeping peacefully on the machine and it rotates, something like a CT scan. And what is this ionizing radiation? I told we treat with ionizing radiation. So this ionizing radiation is a part of the light, it is something beyond the visible spectra. And you can see the UV rays which come from the sun, that is also an ionizing radiation and that can cause skin uh, malignancies. Similarly, X-ray machines, they also have ionizing radiation, CT scan with slightly, slightly higher energy and then our therapy machines, they have even more uh, higher energy. And then the other myth about uh, the various cell phones and all that. Are they ionizing radiation? No. The radiation from cell phones are not ionizing radiation. Otherwise, you could treat by just keeping mobile next to the patient. They are non-ionizing. But will they cause cancer? As of now, there is no proven uh, data for that. In future, we don't know what the studies will come out with. So types of radiation therapy. Teletherapy or external radiation, this is the most commonly used. And whenever we talk about radiation treatment, this is what uh, we generally refer to. External beams of radiation are used for uh, targeting the cancer and this is used in treatment of almost all the malignancies that we come across. And the next type is brachytherapy. In brachytherapy, the source is placed into or near to the cancer. Commonly used in uh, cervical cancer, head and neck cancer and uh, soft tissue sarcomas. Now this external beam radiation therapy, you can see here, this is just a small video. Uh, there is no actually that red light what you're seeing is just to dip it otherwise it's a colorless uh, rays that are coming out so the machine will be rotating around and the uh, radiation is delivered in various uh, direction so the treatment will take about maybe 15 to 20 minutes maximum and then the patient is out and evolution of radiation therapy because most of the doctors have this uh, concept like right? non-oncological radiation but that is more so common in the older machines than the newer ones. In this picture, you can see the black color is a tumor. And uh, for the reference, there is something called as a sensitive organ. It can be anything. It can be the brain, spinal cord, or the eye. Previous treatment was with a 2D technique, where you can see it's like an outer box. This box which is there, that was a previous technique. Like, entire thing, whatever is inside the box is treated. Doesn't matter whether it is sensitive tissue or the tumor. So everything would have the side effects. Then came the advancement of 3D treatment where it was taking some shape and some of the surrounding tissue could be spared. Still the tumor and the close by organs are getting almost the same dose. 
and the latest technique, it is IMRT or intensity modulated uh, radiation. Here it is very much conformal, that is it takes just the shape of the tumor. You can see this white one. The tumor is very close to the sensitive organ, but still it is like, you know, spared by this treatment. So that is how we treat. So some of these malignancies like nasopharyngeal cancer, where we give a very high dose of radiation and it is very close to eye, still we can spare the eye. So that is what we do with radiation in the modern era. And next, briefly about brachytherapy. This is how the brachytherapy machine looks like. It is a portable small uh, machine. And in the second half of the picture, you can see there are some cables. So this is actually a gynec uh, malignancy which is being treated. So from this machine, those cables are connected to the patient. And via that, the radioactive material will travel and the treatment is delivered. The role of radiation therapy is always there in definitive treatment, where it is the only treatment required in adjuvant that is following surgery or chemo, as a neogen that is prior to any surgery, and as a palliation. Palliation role is in pain management or bleeding or any other pressure symptoms because of the tumor. And definitive treatment, I'll not go in detail. It's mainly in uh, head and neck early malignancies, uh, cervical cancer and lung cancer, esophageal cancer, anal canal prostate, bladder cancers, here radiation alone may be sufficient in the entire cure. Adjuvant treatment in any tumor which is slightly advanced, single modality is not going to cure. So uh, formerly we see in breast cancer, endometrial cancer, head and neck locally advanced tumors, gastric cancer, lymphomas or CNS tumors, adjuvant radiation is being given. New adjuvant in some cases like rectal cancer, sarcoma and again in uh, locally advanced head and neck, sometimes we give new adjuvant treatment. Palliation, as I mentioned, role is not in all the malignancies, I mean all the sites, but more common in bone metastasis, brain metastasis, and in case of uh, bleeding, like uh, let's say advanced CSOX or any hemoptysis or hematemesis, spinal cord compression, and uncontrolled uh, pain because of pressure symptoms or tumor. Then side effects. Myth about uh, side effects, it's very painful. Radiation madhavaka no vaktada, that is a common thing people ask. No, there is no pain while giving treatment. And does it cause burns? Again, there are no burns. So, what are the side effects that we see? First of all, it's a painless treatment as I told. And there are skin reactions. The skin reaction will depend upon which area we are treating. If we are treating the head and neck uh, side, the side effects will not be seen in the rest of the body. It's only to that area. So, the reactions may be like just a skin color changes, sometimes dryness or there can be some superficial uh, peeling off of the skin. And then mucositis. This mucositis again it depends on the area. It can be in head and neck or it can be in the GI or anywhere that we are treating. Xerostomia, yes, in head and neck malignancy, xerostomia was the main uh, culprit. Uh, so patients post radiation had a lot of dryness. But with the present era that also is uh, very minimal and we can spare the parotids. Fibrosis, this is a long term complication that we see. Uh, that is somehow not totally eradicated even with the modern era. There will be some amount of fibrosis no matter whichever uh, technique we use. And hair loss, hair loss is not diffuse. Again, it is only in the treatment area. Then uh, finally, some of the myth busters. Uh, many of you may have the doubt. I have put some of the common questions which my patients or some of my other colleagues ask me. Are family members exposed to radiation after treatment? No. The family members are not exposed to it. As soon as the treatment is done, there is no radiation in the body of the patient and he can walk away peacefully. Is fasting necessary before or after radiation? No, that again is not necessary. Is traveling possible during treatment? Yes, very much possible. If the patient is fit otherwise, then the patient can travel. Can a person do normal work during radiation therapy? Yes. So many of our uh, patients, they may be like working or some of them are even students, they come in the evening, take the treatment and go back and follow their uh, routine work. Is radiation therapy painful? As I told a couple of times before, no. It is not painful and in fact it is used in treatment of uh, cancer pain. And uh, radiation therapy causes nausea and vomiting? Yes, it is site dependent. It is more in case if you are treating the abdomen and also in some of the CNS malignancies. They can have uh, nausea and vomiting, but not in other sites. Radiation therapy increases the chance of getting cancer. This again is one of the things. Some of the people Google about uh, radiation before they come to us and they say, Dr. Radiation Madhya Cancer Birth Layake Madhbeku. The chance of second cancer is about 1 to 5 percent and that is seen about after 15 to 20 years. Now if you start looking at the survival of the patient, 
So if a patient can survive for 15 to 20 years post treatment, I think that itself is great. So second malignancy should not be the first uh, priority when you're treating. That may be one of the last. If you can survive for that long, yes, we have done a good job. And radiation therapy is needed for all cancer patients? No, it is not necessary. Sometimes it may be sufficient uh, to just uh, go forward with the surgery and that will be curative. And radiation therapy is always given with chemo? No. Concurrent chemotherapy is given in most of the cases, but it is not a hard and fast rule that always chemo has to be given. And some more of those. Whole body is exposed uh, to radiation during treatment? No. As I was uh, showing with the modern technique, only the tumor can be targeted, even the adjacent organ also can be spared. And the next question which many of my patients ask, radiation therapy under ushna aktada, is it heat and uh, tampu madbeka? No, radiation therapy is not ushna. Whatever reactions that ushna they depicted is basically the mucositis that they are talking about. So no uh, treatment is required for this uh, radiation ushna. And there is no role of radiation therapy after complete removal of tumor. So this question I frequently come across when uh, breast cancer patients come to me. They first undergo surgery, then they have some 6 to 8 cycles of chemo and finally when they think everything is over, they are referred to us, telling next time go on the radiation beko. So they ask like, I have no tumor and also underwent uh, chemo, is it required? Yes, there is role of radiation in spite of the entire tumor being removed and even if they have received chemo because each of the treatment modality have their own uh, role to play in uh, curing cancer. To summarize my entire talk, radiation therapy is a painless modality of treating cancer with ionizing radiation. It can be used to cure cancer either alone or along with surgery and uh, chemotherapy. Radiation therapy can be used for palliation of pain, bleeding and pressure symptoms. Thank you. Uh, thanks Kini for that uh, talk on radiation oncology. Mr. can we come? So uh, I think the radiation, uh, the way they give radiation has changed a lot over a peri period of years. One of the most important areas where I have seen it change is in colorectal cancer, especially the lower rectum. Previously, APR was the treatment of choice. Everybody gets a colostomy. But now, uh, they give excellent radiation combined with chemotherapy. Then they reassess after two to three months. There is a small percentage, it's not a big percentage, but a small percentage of patients who go into complete remission. I think Dr. Yashasri will show you some PET scans. Where they go into complete remission, and in fact, in some of them, you can avoid a colostomy, you can avoid a surgery itself. This is not a big percentage. All patients with low rectal cancers always underwent surgery. Now this is not the case. So I think radiation has come a long way and now we recognize where it can really help uh, in treating patients. Yashasri is our uh, consultant in nuclear medicine. He's done his MBBS and MD uh, from the prestigious uh, Jipmer uh, Medical College in Pondicherry. He was working as an assistant professor in Manipal KMC and he's joined uh, Mangalore Institute of Oncology. So he will talk about role of PET CT in oncology. Just like the previous two speakers, he'll be short and very sweet. Napati to kindly come forward to Dr. Pradeep Napati to kindly come forward and welcome Dr. Yashasvi Kilambi, Dr. Kilambi. role of PET CT in oncology. Rather than uh, going through the basic uh, scans or even sensitivity specificity, etc., I'll show what is the role of PET CT in and impact of uh, PET CT on management of patients in oncology. <coughs> so we'll see what is PET CT, what is the mechanism of action and applications of PET CT uh, like uh, Okay, anyway. uh, PET stands for positron emission tomography. For this purpose, we use radioactive elements which will emit positrons, which are positively charged electrons, which will eventually be picked up by the scanner. And uh, the images are reconstructed and we can view the images. This is a PET CT scanner. It's in hybrid imaging, PET as well as CT. So there are two rings in the gantry behind. This is a gantry, this is where the patient will lie down. So in one go, we can take acquire PET as well as CT scans, fuse them and then uh, review the images. Uh, we call it a tracer, not a contrast. In pet, uh, nuclear medicine, uh, we call it a tracer because it traces the physiological uh, process in the body, like uh, glucose metabolism for fluorodeoxyglucose, and uh, pro prostate membrane antigens will be targeted by uh, PSMA. 
as well as serotonin receptors by DOTA agents. So major mainstream is F18. All of you already know F, uh, FDG. That is a mainstream. There is also gallium 68, gallium PSMA, etc. There are other traces also which are used for uh, other purposes, more in the research and academic orientations. So this is, I think uh, all of you would have will recognize this one. This is uh, essentially an MIP uh, image of a PET, maximum intensity projection. Here you can see brain uptake, heart uptake, some mild uh, diffuse liver uptake is there and uh, urinary blood uh, distribution is also there. This is physiological. And uh, you can see compared to the previous one, there is a dark, there are dark spots here. That is a malignant or infective or inflammatory uptake of PET. So applications for staging, it's pretty straightforward. Primary and uh, local infiltration and lymph nodal and tissue metastasis. That we are not, we won't uh, see much. It will be useful for restaging, response assessment, and uh, more importantly, treatment modification. This is just to show you the uh, like value of uh, PET CT in lung CI. You can see the high uh, sensitivity and specificities of uh, FDG. Essentially, it will be similar in all other uh, scans because I mean all other cancers because all the tumors are uh, glucose hungry, so they'll take up more uh, FDG. This is a pretty straightforward case, case of CA breast, uh, patient present with complaints of swelling in the left breast, increasing over the past few months, and biopsy was done. This is how it look on the PET CT image. You can see the increased uptake of FDG in the lesion. It's rather a multifocal lesion, two lesions are there, with axillary lymph node metastasis. Now, uh, now more importantly, there is uh, recently we have something called as PET-guided biopsy. And uh, its advantages over standalone CT, we can see here. This is a case of uh, CA lung. We can see the increased FDG uptake here, surrounded by non-FDG away consolidative changes in the lung. So essentially, if you can see just the CT image, it all looks fairly similar. So for example, if uh, instead of going for the biopsy in this area, looking at the CT, if you had gone in this or in any other area, we would get a negative result. So this way, PET CT will be uh, useful for uh, guiding the biopsy. Not just uh, CA lung, for example, in a case of uh, lymphoma also. Uh, if uh, there is a high uptake will be there in some of the nodes, low uptake will be there in some of the nodes. We can see in the scan and I can uh, suggest the oncologist like where to get the biopsy from, which might turn out to be mostly a positive result. And uh, this is another case. CA breast, uh, it's post-operative case, post-chemotherapy, radiotherapy, everything was done. Patient came with a back pain. Patient has a multiple uh, lesions, metastatic lesions in the uh, spine, uh, vertebral column. Of course, there are multiple steroidic lesions also, but here what I want to show you is there is increased uptake in the bone marrow because on CT image there is no uptake at all. I mean, sorry, there is no anatomical lesions at all, but however, on PET CT we can see increased uptake. So, this is one of the other advantages. And uh, this is a case of any solitary pulmonary nodule. You all know that solitary pulmonary nodule, depending on the size of the nodule, the but, you know, uh, chance of malignancy will uh, differ. However, if there is increased FDG uptake, it is uh, highly likely that that uh, lesion is metastatic. Uh, FDG has around 90, 91% uh, sensitivity in uh, solitary pulmonary nodules. And for uh, it's useful for restaging also. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, this was a 78-year-old uh, male, known case of CA lung. Post, this is sorry, this is the first scan before uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Uh, this is a primary lesion. You can see the consolidation, which is uh, obstructing the bron bronchus and causing consolidation in the lung. We have taken a follow-up scan for this patient. These are all actually very uh, recent scans. Uh, in this, uh, we can see in this area of consolidation has actually reduced because the primary in the site has come down. But however, the patient has multiple other new lesions were there, which were not seen in the previous scan. Even uh, there is a paratracheal lymph node. This is a small pleural lesion. I actually should have included the CT in the sagittal section to show how, like, it's just over the diaphragm. So if we just uh, see the CT alone, we wouldn't, uh, might not have uh, picked up. But on here, we can see the FDG uptake. Of course, there is a, there are lesions at other sites, so it is metastatic. But uh, even then, uh, FDG helps in this diagnosis. And uh, it also, PET-CT also has a role in guiding the treatment and looking beyond just the local regional disease. 
Uh, traditionally, when we take a CT image, we usually take a regional image. For example, uh, this is a case of a CA rectum with the local regional uh, infiltration is there. This patient was planned for uh, radiation therapy. But however, on PET CT, we have found a, it's nearly a centimeter size node showing a faintly increased FDG uptake. So we, we had a suspicion of uh, metastasis and FNAC actually turned out to be positive in this case. Uh, here, we wouldn't expect uh, metastasis to uh, you know, cervical lymph node in a case of uh, CA rectum. But uh, PET CT helps because in PET, we have seen the MIP images before. It will cover the from head to mid thigh. Here we can see from head to mid thigh. This is a routine uh, PET CT we do. For example, in multiple myeloma case and any other bone uh, malignancies, we take till uh, toe, head to toe. So essentially, when I see the images, I will see through the entire body. And any small lesion, I will want to rule out malignancy in that. Uh, if Traditionally, if we had taken only the CTs of uh, regional areas, we might have missed the cervical lymph node. And uh, of course, response assessment uh, essentially will do a scan before, give the treatment, and do a scan later, see how the patient responded. That is uh, that is straightforward anyway. This is a case of lymphoma. Previously, there were uh, mediastinal nodes, increased uptake in the spleen, some gastrohepatic nodes, retroperitoneal mass lesion is there. However, this, uh, this is actually an interim uh, PET CT. In uh, response assessment, we have two types. One is interim, one is end of treatment. Interim is between the chemotherapy cycles, we can do a PET CT and see whether the patient is responding or the treatment is not working, whether the disease is increasing. And end of treatment is essentially after the entire treatment is over, we can just do the PET scan and see how uh, the disease is. So in this case, like uh, Sir KP, uh, Krishna Sir was telling, the, there is complete response. There is no retroperitoneal mass lesion also. So if we might have planned for any uh, adjuvant radiotherapy in this patient, now that is not required. We can avoid that. This is just a table. We'll not go through the details. This is just a uh, universally standardized criteria to see the response in the lymphoma patients. We'll just give a scoring to see whether how much uh, amount of disease is present. And uh, this patient, actually, we were discussing uh, with uh, Haven sir recently. One pay case of uh, colorectal cancer, the patient was on bleomycin. And uh, when the uh, PET-CT report was done, uh, Dr. Haven called me. And we were wondering if it, this could be because of the pulmonary toxicity by bleomycin. He has counseled the patient. And uh, we were on a lookout for any you know, development of symptoms. Patient was, I think, mildly symptomatic that time. And anyway, eventually the patient uh, called and he told the symptoms are increasing. So uh, he has stopped bleomycin and changed the chemotherapy course and the patient symptoms also have improved. So it's not just the malignancy and response alone. We, we can see multiple other aspects and uh, improve the standard of our care. And this is another case of uh, CA rectum post chemo radiation therapy. Here we can see uh, this is the first the first column is the previous uh, before treatment. Anterior wall, uh, we can see increased uptake. We can see enhancing thickening is there. But however, this case has completely disappeared. There is only very subtle thickening and non-enhancing and non-active. Uh, means there is no FTG uptake, which means it is not metabolically active. So this, these are the cases where we can avoid uh, invasive surgeries and keep the patient on close follow. This is uh, another uh, just PET evaluation response criteria in solid tumors. We will just see the left column of it. So for complete metabolic response, we have seen before, like lymphoma or even a CA rectum, we can avoid unnecessary invasive uh, or extra procedures. For partial metabolic response, like for example in an interim uh, PET CT or something, where the patient is responding, then we know the chemotherapy is working. So we can go ahead with the chemotherapy without changing the regimen. Progressive disease is essentially, which is not responding, which is actually increasing. So they might have to go for a stronger uh, chemotherapy regimen. And stable metabolic disease, the name says, there is no progression or regression. And the treatment decision can be taken accordingly. And uh, finally, these are the other tracers. For prostate uh, CA, there is PSMA scan uh, we can do. In our uh, MIO, we are doing F18 PSMA scan. We are getting the source from uh, Bangalore. But we can also, we are planning to get a gallium generator, essentially. From that, we can produce the tracer, which I was talking about, which we can inject the patient directly. We can have an in-house preparation of that. And uh, we can inject the patient and take the scan. 
uh, this second one is the FDG PET and the first one is F18 or even gallium 18 uh, PSMS scan. You can see the number of lesions here are more numerous, very high compared to the first one. So we can see the how uh, more how much more sensitive it is in prostate CS PSMA rather than just the FDG. We are seeing FDG uptake even here. Those are aggressive lesions which are even uh, you know uh, they take up even glucose of course like that. And uh, uh, something else like Dota. This is a case of uh, carcinoid in the left lung, 37 year old female. First one is an FDG PET CT. We are not seeing lesion actually. I mean, there is no uptake. It's well differentiated carcinoid, which is showing very high gallium Dota uptake, Dota knock uptake. And uh, this this is one example of the theranostics where uh, we can therapy as well as a diagnostic procedure uh, will can be fused. Uh, for example, lutetium dotated therapy in cases of metastatic NAT. So, the first is a gallium dotated PET scan because of the higher resolution uh, we can tell. There are multiple lesions and what is, we have to look at the fact that all the lesions are actually showing good uptake, which means the tumor metastatic lesions have good affinity for the DOTA, uh, that DOTA agent. So, we can give a lutetium is a, a therapeutic agent, beta emitter. We can give lutetium dotatate as a therapy to the patient, which will systematically clear off all the cancer cells, not clear off, I mean uh, reduce the disease burden. Similarly, there is a lutetium EDTMP therapy also. For that, we can do uh, this uh, basic bone scan, we can do technetium MDP scan, we can see the affinity, and then we can give the lutetium therapy also for bone pain palliation like that. Next. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Yashasvi. With that, uh, we will end the CME and hand it back to the IMA. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I request all the dear, the President, the Secretary, the Treasurer, the incoming President, the uh, President-elect and the uh, President of IMA KSB, all, all the dignitaries on the who were on the dais to kindly come back onto the dais, please. Thank you very much. Uh, respected President, uh, Dr. Aital, sir, uh, President of IMA KSB, Dr. Kudwa, sir, and, and respected members of uh, IMA, and uh, also from IMA Kasargod. Uh, thank you very much for appointing me as election officer. With this, I will, uh, I am not present in the next team as a working committee member, but I will be always there in IMA for that, Dr. Venugopal. <laughs> Uh, President for 22 and 23 will be Dr. Venugopal. <laughs> Secretary Dr. Archit Bola, where we will be having a dynamic year, and Dr. Treasurer uh, Dr. Nandu Kishore B. <laughs> Joint Secretary Dr. Alam Nawaz, Alam Nawaz, Public Relation Officer Dr. G.K. Bhatt, Sankhya Bitlu. <laughs> President, uh, Vice President Dr. Manohar G. Revankar and Dr. Harish Rao A and editor Dr. Devdas Rai B internal auditor Dr. Jerome Pinto historian Dr. Mukund K and uh, there are uh, 31 uh, state uh, council members who have elected unopposed and I request all of them to come to the uh, inaugural uh, thing and I am not reading the names uh, yeah, President Elector Dr. Ranjan Rao K. Today, World Anesthesia Day. So, we wish uh, all the anesthetists a uh, uh, happy Anesthesia Day. And Dr. Ranjan is an anesthetist. And uh, Central Committee mem Council members uh, are 16. And once again, I request all of them to come for the meeting, uh, next meeting, and also. Uh, alternate Central Council members are 16. So all will be together, there will be 81 members in the team next year. And uh, not to forget, ex-officio members will be Dr. Satyamurthy Aital, Dr. Sadanand Pujari, and IMA Trust President, Dr. Divakar Rao A, and uh, Secretary, Dr. Sachidanand Rai B, he was there, you know. And members from IMA to IMA Trust, Dr. Rajesh Balan, and Dr. Roshan Shetty. 
So that's about the team. I have not read the members because uh, I'm expecting them as well as uh, uh, for the time shortage. And uh, I have uh, one more task about the... Yeah, IMA uh, state with the IMA Karkala hosting because IMA Karkala is very close to us as well as Udupi. So all of us together hosting the IMA uh, conference in Mudubidre. President of IMA KSP also requested to request most because we are always involved in the uh, this uh, particular event, requesting all IMA members of Mangalore to register, registration, uh, because our registration is quite less. We are requesting many members from IMA uh, Mangalore to register, registration uh, counter, we will get the uh, details of the registration as uh, we are involved in even the posters and a lot of students have uh, registered uh, for the poster and uh, this thing from uh, Mangalore. Uh, thing is we need a lot of chairman and judge, uh, judges for the those things. Kindly register for the IMA uh, conference at Moodbidre. So that's fine. And one important thing, today IMA uh, trust members are there. Dr. Bhaskar Shetty sir is also there. Uh, we uh, request, because IMA trust, uh, uh, there is a message which is drafted by our uh, beloved uh, uh, trustee, Dr. Uh, Jerome Pinto, sir, on behalf of all the trustees and uh, the team, uh, which is, we are all endorsing, Dr. Divakar Rao, sir, Sachitanand Rai, me, as well as Dr. Uh, uh, Devadika, sir. That is, um, dear friends, you know, IMA is an, uh, IMA is as and IMA building is our home. We all love it and gladly spent our time in it. Since pandemic, IMA building income has dwindled and so there is no corpus money for the repair. Now this building and this hall requires urgent work of about a probable cost of about 15 lakhs. Hence, there is a request to you to donate generously and uh, this is a request from IMA Executive Committee and IMA Trust. Uh, IMA President also uh, uh, joined for this and uh, this is already, uh, we have already collected uh, two lines. Prasad, Senior Medical Oncologist, to kindly come forward and accept a uh, token of our gratitude. Next, I call upon Dr. Heman Kumar, Medical Oncologist, to kindly come forward and accept a token of our gratitude from Dr. Suresh Kodwa, President IMA KSB, Karnataka State Branch. Thank you, Dr. Heman. Now I call upon Dr. Venkatraman Kini. He has, he has left, is it? Okay. And, uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad, on behalf of Venkatraman Kini, if you can come forward and kindly collect the moment, please. So sweet to kindly come forward and accept a token of our gratitude on a representative on behalf of IMA Manglo. Thank you, Dr. SSV. Also, thank you, Dr. Suresh Kudova, for having done the honor. Now we have the um, momento to the guest of honor. I call upon our president, Dr. Satyamurthy Aital, sir, to kindly present the um, momento to begin with to our IMA KSP state president. And then I call next, uh, I call upon the President to present the talk in a moment or two. B. Narayan Rai, President of IMA Kasa Gold
and ladies and gentlemen, all the uh, family members of Micro Times, it is my proud privilege to propose the vote of thanks uh, for today's uh, fair TV oration and CME and annual general body. I am a Micro Times. <laughs> I'm